When you meditate, what are you doing? I know some people who think even that is the wrong question. They say meditation is not doing. But the Buddha never taught it that way. It's very much something you have to put together when we're mindful. We're not just aware of what's coming up. The awareness of what's coming up, that's alertness. Mindfulness is keeping certain things in mind. One of which is that you wouldn't want to remember what to do with what comes up. Think in terms of the Four Noble Truths. If a cause of suffering comes up, you want to abandon it. If something that would help lead to the end of suffering, you want to develop it. So you have to choose which mental states are skillful, which ones are not. And you have to remember from the past what you have noticed, either on your own or from what you've learned from other people. So you're not just with whatever comes up. When things come up, you have to figure out, what do I do with this? Because the mind is an active principle. We're doing all the time. And the Buddha is not saying to stop doing things. He's basically saying, learn how to do what you're doing skillfully. Because you're choosing which thoughts to go with, which ones not. That's something we do all the time. But you have to ask yourself, what are your standards for choosing what to go with and what not? The Buddha's standards is if you go with something and it leads to long-term harm or pain, okay, don't go there. Do what you can to drop that thought. If it leads to long-term welfare and happiness, encourage that. If it seems like it's falling away, do what you can to maintain it. And as you maintain it, try to make it grow. That, the Buddha said, is when mindfulness is really in charge. I have a student who's a therapist for movie stars, and she's found that when she goes around and talks to movie stars about mindfulness, they usually say, well, I've already done mindfulness and didn't do much for them. They're just sitting there accepting. She said, well, we're going to do mindfulness 2.0, which is once you've accepted what's there, then the next question is, what do you do with it? You have to have what they call a moral compass as to what's right, what's wrong, what's skillful, what's not skillful, and shape your mind in a skillful direction. That's when you're really being mindful. Otherwise, you're just aware. And simple awareness on its own is not going to be enough. You have to be mindful and you have to be ardent. You have to want to do this well. That's when the mindfulness really does make a good difference in the mind. And it does a lot for you and for the people around you. Because skillful qualities, the ones that lead to long-term welfare and happiness, don't involve mistreating other people. You have to be sensitive to their needs as well. Have some compassion for them, too, if you want your happiness to last. So mindfulness 2.0 is good for everybody. For the people who do it and the people who live around people who do it. It's your gift to yourself and your gift to the world.